I have divorced the EFF, says Um Paul, right? Uti, I have divorced the EFF. And then it's asked a qu very important question. But you were there saying Zuma must fall. You were there saying Zuma must... Hey, again, it exposes lack of journalism in this country. In that, there is this tendency of looking at things or following preconceived ideas. And then you take the preconceived ideas and you follow it. And I'm, I will explain that shortly. If you look at the question that we asked by O. Clement, that's how you realize that Clement, you did not do, you and your producer, you didn't do your research because you said, you, Mpo, said this. And the guy said, give me a proof. Because at that time when you guys saying all of these things, when you say, when you say I said those things, I wasn't even in the country, I was in the United States. When did I say that? To say the least, I, I, I once spoke about this, that I had a conversation with one of the radio producers who said to me, we were told never to say any good thing about Jacob Zuma. And I was looking at comments and somebody says, in this country there are Zuma laws. Now they are going to create Judge Lopez, Judge Lopez laws now. In other words, this person is saying there are things that get to be said which doesn't even exist. Rules that get to be, we get to be told about which doesn't even exist. Those things, they get to be said so that a point can be secured and a narrative can be, look, a narrative can be made and people can be persuaded into thinking that, yes, whatever we are saying, it is true. If you say to me, like this man is saying, I mean, I've never actually said the things that you said I said. They, they don't have a proof. It begs this question. How many things do we say that later on we realize that was just, just a speculation? We sometimes follow sentiments, not facts, and make the sentiment as facts. People went out to protest and they said, Zuma... Um, he, he wants to kill us. He wants to uh, look. He wants to uh, introduce a nuclear electricity for electricity. Guess what? Protest people protested that they said we don't need the nuclear. Zuma wants to kill us. Okay. Stage six low trading. People now remember that hey, Zuma once so told us. Had we listened to Zuma, then we will not be in this problem. Guess what? The expert today are saying we need a nuclear. ESCOM now is busy building the nuclear. So, what Zuma told you is not okay as long as it is Zuma. You say this thing of listening to media too much. It is going to mislead you. Why are you not protesting today and saying, Hi, hey, nuclear is going to kill us. Oh, now that the word, let's build nuclear, is no longer coming from Zuma, it's now okay. But when it was from Zuma, hey, you want to kill us? Corruption. So now it's fine. Tell me. You see, what I'm, the point I'm driving home is we are allergic to Zuma. Even when Zuma says a point. Tina, we, instead of looking at what he says, we're just allergic to Zuma. Do not be allergic to this if you are not yet subscribed what are you waiting for come on good people because to subscribe it is free to like the video it is free to comment in the comment section below it is free of charge to click the notification bell it is free of charge to share this video it is free of charge to watch this video until the end it is free of charge also good people i mean come on to watch the ads it's free of charge and that's how you financially contribute to this YouTube channel. Speaking about financially contributing to the channel, you can join, become a member of this YouTube channel from as likely as 20 rand a month. You can also uh, use the super thanks party. In case you don't want to do that, guys, there is a way where you can use my media company banking details to donate to the channel. And you know what I'm saying? will bring you more and also guys want to buy 
more equipment. So, the power is in your hands. Please do the honorable thing as we proceed. Now, I want you to listen to Umpo here. The reason I'm mentioning all these things is because it starts from um, what Umpo is saying here to say, guys, may I never said all the things that you guys are saying. You are telling me that. Not the other way around. May I never said that. You want me to say those things, not that I want to say those things. You want me to look like I was in contention with Jacob Zuma, but I've never actually contested the man on that. The political party that I was part of uh, took a posture of that nature, and because I'm affiliated to that political party, I can't come out and oppose it. And I thought to myself, that's actually fair right? Because whatever decision get to be taken by the ANC, remember the policy of the ANC that where if we are all voting for or voting against this decision, whether you are now you are saying this or that, remember you are employed by the party. So you abide by the decisions of the party. So in other way, in other words, I don't really have a problem with the man. The explanation given, really, guys, I don't have a problem with it. So, but again, uh, without wasting much of your time, I want you to listen to what he says, how he answers questions. And it just got me thinking. I was like, yeah, no, it makes sense to me. Really, guys, I was like, I was like, hmm, really makes a lot of sense. I see a lot of reasoning in it. But take a look at what he said. Here. In power in the Republic of South Africa, not mm -hmm. some... Uh, people who are contesting uh, elections. Mm. And uh, when you join a party like that, you subject yourself to the wisdom mm. of the leader, which is in Namalala. Remember, mm. we were speaking about the former states. Uh, yeah. And state this is president. a man, by the way, you led protests. No, no, I'm coming there. You, you, I, I, let me finish this point. Yeah. I, I'm saying I, I had a, a narrative which is very wrong, mm. uh, especially as African people saying that uh, we can't uh, follow an 82-year-old uh, pension. Mm. I, I think that's absurd coming from an yeah. African brother. Because as an African, when we look at our uh, old people, those are the people with wisdom yeah. and guidance. So uh, I'm subjecting myself to that man because of his wisdom. He led the intelligence yeah. under uh, the arms struggle. He's been critical in ensuring that uh, there's a liberation Your party of called him a people. constitutional delinquent. Why did you lead protests for him to step down? You said he violated the constitution. Uh, the, the, he yeah. shouldn't be president at the time. The, the march, when they went uh, to union buildings, I was in the United States of America. Uh, I was invited there. I did not participate in that march. And if you check, I never uttered uh, anything untoward against the Ngamala Alam Sholos. Now, when he was uh, incarcerated, I'm the one of the people in the organization boldly yeah. who said that it will be absurd to celebrate the incarceration but back then, I, I of do remember, uh, a president. Uh, back then, uh, you did say this man has violated the constitution. He has to step down. Remember, uh, I'm a member of a political organization. Yeah. If there's a posture, yeah. of a political organization, one subject himself or okay. herself to that particular posture. But you can't quote me anywhere where I said Ngamalala is a constitutional delinquent. Yes, that's a position the party took, but yes. I know you said he must step down because he violated the, the constitution. The EFF said so, yes. Thank you so much for coming down <laughs> through Mpo. I'm hoping to have a chat with you some more um, in your new role, whatever it will be. Okay, okay. Now, as we proceed to get guys... Um, you have heard the man saying what he said. Tell me something. If it was, have you ever, let's, let's leave uh, the political parties. How many people are displeased with certain things at SAPC? Have you ever heard those journalists saying anything? No. So it tells us that in uh, under any organizations, people can be displeased with certain decisions that are ta that get taken by this their seniors. But even in fact, even you at your work, you probably disagree with your seniors. Certain things you don't agree with them. But have you ever gone on social media and say, "Yeah, I mean, my company, the boss says this." No, you don't. Why? Because it's company policy. You can't do that. 
So it makes sense to me. It makes a lot of sense. But another thing that um, I want us to talk about is this thing. I want us to talk about this thing of um, this thing of. I want us to talk about this thing of. Zuma laws in this country. Why, why things that were said by Zuma? We protested and we said things. I, when I say we, I'm just talking about you guys. Me, I never do. I've never done that. Cause me, I read through this. I was like, this is nonsense. This is bullshit. I'm not. I'm not gonna do this. But yeah, let me just say, we protested, just to make some of you guys feel comfortable about yourself. But then the things we once protested against when they were said by Zuma, ESCOM and nuclear is just one example out of many. Why today are we doing exactly those things? Why? Remember, we have a problem with, look, with the things that Zuma said. Remember, we once have a problem with how corrupt Jacob Zuma is. Do you remember that? We were on the street with placards saying, Hey, that corruption guy, that corrupt guy. What happened to our zeal? Today, the one that we have is not corrupt, right? That's why we don't protest. I'm just asking myself those questions, you know. I kind of feel like, you know, sometimes we destroy things and go and blame it on somebody else. I think we deserved stage six in this country. Rightfully so, we really deserved stage six in this country. I mean, what have we done about it? Nothing. But if it was the other one, we would have protested, saying this and that, this and that. But this time, we don't protest. I wonder why. 